Now, coming to my first submission, Agent Humley submits that the Internet Responsibility Act not being violative of the freedom of speech and expression and being a reasonable restriction is valid, Your Excellencies. Now, Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights guarantees a right to seek and re receive information through any medium subject to certain reasonable limitations being placed on this right under Article 29, Your Excellencies. It is in light of these provisions that agents submit that in the present case, the requirement to collect and verify identity information is one, a reasonable restriction on the right to anonymity if there exists one in the first case on the internet, two, that is a prior restraint which is in the interest of national security and within the state's wide margin of appreciation, and lastly, that the restriction in the present case is necessary in the interest of democracy and hence satisfies the three-pronged test that they pointed out under the European Convention of Human Rights. First, one of the valuable aspects of the freedom of speech and expression is the right to anonymity. However, this right is one which is subject to certain limitations and can be restricted as an individual's identity is also very much a valuable commodity, commodity for the government to identify who is responsible for certain acts in the country, as pointed out in the case of US versus Pelosi, referred to in footnote nine of our submissions, Your Excellencies. Mr. Frank Lee Rue was a special rapporteur for the United Nations on freedom of speech and expression. He pointed out that a real name verification requirement per se on the face of it does not compromise this right to anonymity. In the present case, the restriction which has been imposed requiring collection and verification of identity information is hence justifiable primarily for three reasons. One, anonymity, if it were to be extended to the internet, which my learned friends for the applicants have failed to point out, they've merely referred to the case of McIntyre versus Ohio, which is a case about distribution of pamphlets, campaign literature, and not extending anonymity to the internet. However, if this chamber were to believe that anonymity under freedom of speech and expression does extend to the internet, it is submitted that it, in this case, it is validly restricted. Anonymity, as we all know, fosters the efficacy of the internet as a tool of terrorism, as a tool for growing violence, Your Excellency, that is undebated. Secondly, it is our submission in this case that the applicants, the very moment they voluntarily reveal their identity information to a stranger web page, lose this right to anonymity, as held in the United States by the case of State versus Reed and Guest versus Lewis, as held by the European Court of Human Rights in Plon versus France, and as pointed out by eminent authors such as Professor Dirk Woodhoff, Your Excellency, that the moment such a voluntary revelation of identity information is made, an expectation of anonymity to that extent will be lost, Your Excellencies. Lastly, why such a restriction is valid in this case is primarily because it is essential to create that fine balance that the European Court mentioned in the case of Roman versus Luxembourg and the United States Supreme Court in the case of New York Times versus United States, that fine balance between this right to an, in, an individual's right to anonymity and the state's right to find out who is responsible for particular acts, Your Excellency. Hence, the right, the restriction on anonymity in this case, if it were to extend to the internet, is justified, Your Excellency. You're referring, oh, sorry, yeah, please. You're referring to the state's right to find out who is responsible for particular acts. Yes, yes, yes. But that is not what this order is. This is saying provide us with details of every user. Why, why um, is that the state looking for um, the people who are responsible for particular acts? Yes, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, if I may draw your attention to para 14A and 14D, which bring out the provisions of the Internet Responsibility Act. It is two-pronged. One, it creates a requirement for the website to collect 
and verify such identity information, which many websites already do, which is already happening in the case of uh, telephone services, Your Excellency. Secondly, the revelation or the disclosure of this information is only to be made on a case-by-case -case basis as and when requested by the state, Your Excellencies, and not mind it of all users, but only those users who have registered for a particular website, in this case, Open Bay Media, Your Excellency, and hence have voluntarily decided to disclose their identity information, historical information, etc., to the stranger web page. Web page. Uh, Council, would I, I be right to think that, given what you've just said about the purpose of the legislation, the effect of the legislation will be to make it impossible to use uh, Open Bay Media as a way of exposing abuses by the forces of the state. Is that correct? Your Excellency, I understand your, that, that your doubt stems from various cases where such a restriction has been imposed so as to intimidate the minority into self-censorship. However, this does not satisfy such case. The present fact situations demand a response as has been propounded by the state. Now I draw your attention to the case under the European Convention of Leo versus Finland and that of Klaus versus Germany, referred to in footnotes 30 and 31. Now in these cases, it was pointed out that whether a particular restriction is necessary or not is to be decided based on the circumstances prevailing in that particular state, an inquiry which is best carried out by the state, Your Excellencies. And hence, the European Convention granted a certain margin of appreciation to the states in deciding whether there existed a pressing social need and what adequate response to be tailored for that need, Your Excellencies. Now, so, so, so we should leave it to the state of Bermidia to decide whether there's a pressing social need for a facility for publication of abuses by the forces of the state. Is, is, no, that, is that right? No, Your Excellency, all that has been submitted is that the state is granted a wider margin of appreciation in deciding whether a particular restriction is reasonable or not. The final decision as to whether it satisfies the test lies with the European Court and various other courts, both international and regional, Your Excellencies. Now, in this case, in order to... Be before you go to the European Court to find out this balance, uh, I think you just referred to the case of Klaas versus Germany. Yes where this court has uh, requested certain domestic remedies to be available in similar situations. Would you uh, please explain in yes. what manner this law would provide such, uh, such safeguards for the circumstances of, uh, of, the, um, of the case? Yes. Yeah. Now, taking Your Excellency's question of safeguards and remedies to a more normative level, rather than restricting it to the case of Klaus versus Germany, I will answer that on three counts, Your Excellencies. One, as I've already pointed out, that there is a certain wide margin of appreciation which is granted to the state. Second, Your Excellencies, if I may draw a parallel to various other similar legislations, Your Excellency. Two, provision 2703 of the Stored Communications Act, which again requires, say, states that when it comes to non-content information, such as identity information, a, a mechanism of review within the Act is not really required. Similarly, under the Information and Technology Act in India, intercept under Section 69A and B, it is clearly provided that the state can ask for interceptions to be made by government agencies on a case-by-case -case basis. In this case, Your Excellencies, one, we have not been provided with the entire statute book of the media, and hence whether certain rules and regulations have been framed for guiding this particular uh, legislation is not really clear. Second, it pointed out that one, the IRA does not require disclosure of content information. All that it requires is a disclosure of bare minimum identity information to create a registration system. Private contents, etc., are not being disclosed. Two, it is an empowering legislation. Now if I uh, draw your attention to the entire scheme of acts that have been introduced in the media by the state. 
they introduced the Military Secrets Act. They, in fact, they amended the Military Secrets Act. Now, in amending that, they expanded the definition of location service of military secrets. And they stated that if someone were to reveal certain military secrets, the location information of the military, that would be a violation of this act. Once uh, a situation like this has arisen, and say a user on Open by Media using a pseudonym has been suspected of a violation of this right uh, of this Military Secrets Act, how are the state to find out the identity of this user? And hence, in addition to support the Military Secrets Act, in order to create a framework where terrorists could be nabbed, Your Excellency, the requirement of an empowering legislation such as the IRA, which allows the state to create a database of identity information, and thereafter, as and when circumstances would arise, as and when it, there would be reasonable suspicion to which my learned friends for the applicant conceded, a revelation or a disclosure of identity information could be asked for. In fact, that the state, there has been no reported instance of any misuse of this power by the state. And if I draw your attention to a slight difference between Paras 15 and 16, both requiring disclosure of information, you will notice, Your Excellencies, that under Para 15, no request under Para 14C for keeping this request secret for 180 days has been made. Under Para 16, that request has been made. So it clearly shows that it is only in instances such as the MLM Forum, where the posts are private, where it is a secret clubhouse, probably of terrorist activities, suspected terrorist activities, that the government would require disclosure and for it to be kept uh, that's, secret, that's, Your Excellency. That's even a big statement on its own. But I want to take you back uh, a, a few seconds ago to, yes. to another compelling statement that you made, where you said that uh, anonymity is, uh, is an important tool for, tourism and you, uh, for terrorism, and you said it's, it's undoubtful and, and it cannot be doubted. What is your authority on that? Because uh, for, for such a big statement, you cannot just leave us there. You need. I draw your attention to cases such as criminal indictment of Al Hussein versus the United States or to the case of uh, Aklo, Georgia versus Miller. Now okay. in these cases, what happened was, there were people on the internet who were inciting violence, who had opened up websites allowing people to but provide didn't, didn't funding. Miller, didn't Miller uh, cancel the, the law in that case? Or? Your Excellency, the conclusions of these cases are not what I'm drawing your attention to, but the mere fact that the internet can be used as a tool for terrorism and fundraising, and that too, when the internet in a state like Bermuda so can be used is as a different can be used as different thing from as an important tool for terrorism. <laughs> That's what I'm it trying is. to draw you back to. Yes, it is accepted, conceded, but when taken in light of the state's margin of appreciation, it be and a wide margin of appreciation, it becomes a valid ground for imposing a restriction. Now, if I may come to the tests in the United States and... If, if the, I may ask about yes. a different interest. We've been focused on the user's interest in anonymity, but another interest troubles me here, which is the open Bermidia's interest. Uh, through this legislation, you are effectively making them an investigative arm of the state. And uh, shouldn't there be a burden placed on the state to show that it has made all steps in order to address the problem. And it can't be through the state's inadequacy in terms of devoting resources to investigate uh, these different crimes or its ineffectiveness in doing it, that it can then go and enlist the media essentially as its investigator, which may uh, be very chilling in terms of its own relationship with its users and with its posters and uh, violate its own uh, independence or sense of uh, journalistic integrity. So w what about that interest, and where do we draw the line if we allow this legislation to go forward? Your Excellency, your question, in fact, brings me to one of the tests under both the European Convention and the United States. That is, a restriction must be proportionate. It must be least restrictive. And in this case, Your Excellencies, I draw your attention to para 7 of the facts. It states that the government did try and increase military forces. However, due to the manner in which these terrorist attacks were taking place, guerrilla activities, etc., it was unable to prevent the same. 
I draw your attention to para 9 and the last lines of para 9. It says that the posts on Open Bear Media, because of the world-class geotagging systems that are used for the website, allows us to, in fact, plot these posts on a map, Your Excellency. Now, taking it, furthermore, Article uh, Para 13 points to the fact that the state has already amended the Military Secrets Act. Now, despite these measures having already been taken, we see instance, instances such as the MLM forum propping up, all posts being private. And it is to address such activities that it is believed and it is our submission that only a system rooted in a real name verification requirement, which yes, it does place a, a responsibility on the website to collect and verify the information, is clearly necessary in the interest of national security, Your Excellency. Taking into account the fact that as in the cases of Surek versus, uh, Surek versus Turkey and Haji Nastasia versus Greece, decided by the European Court, there have been instances of violence between the two ethnic communities. The state's political independence has been undermined. Armed militia has come up, attacking both Didians and Mondahis. It is not an ethnic question, but one of terrorism. There is a situation where they are effectively leading up to a case where there will be a soon be a demand for secession, independence. Para 5 points to the fact that the private uh, grumblings have now grown into grumblings for independence by Mondahi politicians. Hence, it clearly shows that due to the sensitive condition of the political affairs in Bay Media, it becomes very necessary that the state be given a wider margin of appreciation as it was in Surek and Haji Nastasia to impose restrictions on the freedom of speech and expression, Your Excellency. In fact, reasonable restrictions. If Your Excellency is satisfied and if I may be allowed to very briefly sum up as to why these restrictions are reasonable, both in the United States and the European Convention, I'll proceed, Your Excellency. If you're doing that, can you also cover why there's no sunset provision? Because a great deal was made of that by counsel on the other side. Yes, Your Excellency. Now, it is submitted that in the case of Schleck versus Ukraine by the European Court of Human Rights, it was stated that Article 10 of the European Convention imposes a responsibility on the state to create a regulatory framework for the ap application of freedom of speech and expression on the internet. And hence, this law, one, it is for in the interest of national security, and two, to regulate, to provide a regulatory framework for the internet as such, and to regulate freedom of speech and expression on the internet as such, which is not restricted to the circumstances existing now, which goes well beyond that. And hence, no sunset provision, Your Excellencies. The respondent believes that such a sunset provision in this case is clearly, clearly not the requirement, Your Excellency. So it's your submission that it is always in the interests and always will be in the interests of national security that the government be able to access the name of every person who ever uses the internet? Your Excellency, like I pointed out before, and at the cost of being slightly repetitive, I point out that this is not a case where the government will have access to the names of all persons of Bermedia, or all citizens of Bermedia, or all persons uh, working in Bermedia. It is only the case where users of website, that is, people who decide to post on a particular website, and not users who merely decide to view something on a website, will come under government surveillance. And as the legislation in various countries suggests, as Clause versus Federal